<sighs> oh man, I hate Mondays. No, nah, man, it's Tuesday. Wait, 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 wait. What day is it? You know what day it is. Tuesday. Bruise day, Tuesday. Oh, fuck yeah. It's time for Bruise Day Tuesday. Brought to you by the Cellar and Six Pack Store. Here's Drez and Big Nate. There you go. Bruise Day Tuesday indeed. Brought to you. By the Cellar Restaurant and Six Pack Store, downtown Blacksburg, where they have great beer and good food, and I can't enjoy any of it because I'm on keto. So, uh, Nate, I want to apologize in advance for my keto diet impeding our Bruce Day Tuesday show. We did the the dues, which last I mean last week those Mountain Dews actually weren't that bad. No, those those I I I did enjoy. I think the lowest we gave was like a. Three seven five or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. The watermelon wasn't too too amazing, um, but those ones were that that was low carb, um, zero sugar, which is the main thing you got to look out for on this keto diet is carbs and sugar. So I happened to find uh, the Michelob Ultra Organic Seltzers that are in fact zero carbs and zero sugar, only eighty calories. So uh, very very light. And uh, only 4%. I just popped the cucumber lime, which you said you've actually had this one before. That's why I grabbed this flavor. So a um, couple things here. Uh, my condolences for your uh, whole keto experience. Yeah, I don't know how much longer I'm going <laughs> to put up with it. It's, I mean, you know, we're talking off air. You can't even have carrots in a salad. Yeah. Good it's, Lord. You think that you think you. Yeah. I don't even particularly like carrots, but I think I would notice if I had to cut them out. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've had the cucumber lime before. That's the only flavor out of their selection that I've had. I was at a party and I was like, oh, cucumber lime. That's, that's one of my favorite flavors. It smells light and refreshing, but I've got the, uh, grapefruit melon. And I don't know if you've read your can, but there's a couple of things on here that really stand out to me. And we're going to start with where they've got the nutrition facts. It says naturally flavored. With other natural flavors. Oh, that's nice. They double down on the natural. Like, I really want you to know it's natural. But it also says zero sugar. And then if you go to the second item mm. on the ingredients list, it is organic cold fermented cane sugar. So is that not uh, that's sugar? Definitely sugar somewhere. It's at least organic. So I, I know that they applaud themselves at that. I mean, I guess to a certain degree, you have to have something to ferment so there does have to be sugar i wonder if it just in the process gets yeah. out of there but also six times filtered yes yeah, which seems excessive yeah i don't know it is interesting seeing nutrition uh facts on booze because you pretty much only have them on there if it's something that's like this where you got to brag about it zero fat zero oh, oh excuse me five milligrams of sodium zero carbs zero sugar zero protein chances are th i might as well put it on there Zero flavor. Although, no, honestly, there is some flavor to this one, the uh, cucumber lime. I was, truth be told, I was expecting this, all of these to just be absolutely terrible. This one is pretty refreshing. I will give them that. So if it was a hot summer day, this could be nicer than just being forced to drink it because of the keto. Not that I think Michelob really tracks what I'm saying and thinking because that would be tricky for them to do that. But uh, I, I think... If they knew what I thought about their usual product, the Michelob Ultra, they'd be really thrilled we're doing this for a segment instead of uh... Ultra. See, honestly, and same sort of thing. I think the Mick Ultra is another one that's pretty low carbs that people go to. So if you want the beer route, and I was trying to avoid doing a beer show on the low carbs, mainly because it's all stuff I don't want to drink. And you're not going to be able to get it in like a variety six pack. I would have yeah. to go and buy a case of Mick Ultra, a case of Miller Lite, and all these beers. Then I'm just stuck with them. And I'm like, what am I, you know, I don't I don't want any part of that. So and it's always least, good to branch out. At least with the seltzer, um, uh, you know, we'll drink it and then, you know, me and BB will drink them because we're on the keto thing. So, so. now I, I don't know, I don't believe you and I have done a seltzer show together. That I can remember. We've come close. We've come we might adjacent. Have. We may have. We've I mean, done the Mountain Dew. That was close, yeah. I guess. Like, what do you enjoy 
a good seltzer? Like I feel like not particularly. See, I don't usually reach. I mean, I I like beer. I would go that route. I like beer, but sometimes I do find myself craving a seltzer or a hard soda. And and, and I, I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm I'm kind of shocked. Oh, it's also organic and USDA certified, which is pretty damn cool. I'm I'm pretty shocked so far. Yeah. All right. Well, it's kudos to uh make ultra and their organic seltzer so far and so far we're not totally disgusted with you <laughs> like i was i was worried about but yeah man it's been really rough like i was looking forward to the whole keto thing because you think oh you can eat bacon and eggs and cheese which by the way i've been doing that pretty much for breakfast this whole time which has been fantastic but other than that it's been it's all downhill from breakfast it's just it just sucks like tailgating i mean i don't know if you listen to the tailgate show but uh, you know, we did the tailgate show for the Georgia Tech game, and I just couldn't really eat anything. wasn't Couldn't drink anything because really, you shouldn't even drink alcohol pretty, pretty much. I mean, it's low carbs and and sugar, which is the main thing, but alcohol itself is a bit of a hindrance as well. So, uh, it's just it hasn't been as fun as I had hoped, and the results have been pretty much nothing. Uh, I haven't been losing any weight. It's been I don't know, two and a half weeks or something now. I would have thought I'm definitely in ketosis. I got the little strips that you pee on and you look and it tells you your ketone levels. And I've been in ketosis for like a long time now and still haven't been losing weight. So I'm just pretty pissed off at this point <laughs> that I haven't been able to like enjoy drinking beer or having fun tailgating. And so I do have to ask, because obviously you mentioned you've kind of been cutting back on stuff. Have, have you noticed, like, do you think like after, after that Mountain Dew, show did you notice that alcohol was affecting you differently yeah actually alcohol so after the mountain dew show which that was the last time i drank because you know i haven't really drank i was worried about you know how that was going to affect my ketone level and all this stuff surprisingly after the mountain dew show that was my best next day my, the keto strip was the purplest it had been and I had lost the most weight. So I was like, oh, maybe you do need to just have a little booze with it. So I'm interested to see how tomorrow goes uh, after having these these seltzers. Because um, that was actually a positive. I was surprised. You but... might change the entire science behind the keto diet. They're just going to all get real hooked on uh, I don't know, that's, seltzers. That's what I don't understand is because this is supposed to be science. That if you do this. Your body goes into ketosis and it eats the fat instead of uh, uh, carbs, I guess. It, it, you training your body to eat fat and use up fat as a resource for energy. Yet, somehow that hasn't happened. And I know everybody's a little different, so maybe I'm one of those people that just it doesn't work. In which case, I'm just probably, you know, putting my heart through all this <laughs> fatty issue, yeah. trouble stuff for no reason. Has, has, has your wife noticed a difference? She is. But she, I mean, it's with it's been within the last week or so, but yeah, she's just been steadily losing so, weight every day. Whereas I'm like, because I, I could have lost this weight just dieting normal like a week ago. That's interesting because they say uh, um, men have an easier time burning fat than women do. Supposedly, but I don't know so, if it's uh, different. Also, one of the other things that I was surprised about is that I thought was a little bit backwards when trying to look up this, the keto thing is so, you know, it's a low carb. You can't have no carb. It's pretty much impossible, yeah. but women, I guess their range for a keto to try and get into ketosis is like involves having more carbs than men. Like I think women are supposed to look for like the 30 to 50 range and men are supposed to look at like the 20 to 30 range to get into ketosis, which seems unfair and backwards to me, but whatever. I don't know if that's a factor as well, maybe, but. See, I I thought based on, on my understanding, like, cause I mean, you're, you're the first person I, I've known who's like really like kind of gone at it whole hog. I thought I was like, eh, just cutting out bread and potatoes and stuff like that. I was like, ah, I can, I can do that. No, no problem. As long as I have like meat, but like, what do you eat like when you're going home for dinner tonight? What are you What are you eating? So, uh, I I mean I guess we'll I don't know if it's a plug or not, but we we've been using these factor meals. So it's kind of like you know those. I don't know. I've never done the Blue Apron or any of that, but essentially you, you go online, you're picking meals, and then they're like low carb 
TV dinners almost. They're in a little plastic thing. They're actually pretty damn good, but they're not cheap. And so that's another reason why I'll be happy when this is done. Although it has been a lot easier, you know, you just go home and bam, you just eat them up and then you're good to go. You don't got to worry about cooking dinner and all that. Um, but they're pretty small portions. And uh, but they actually they've been pretty decent. So but other than that, yeah, bacon, egg, bacon, eggs and cheese for breakfast. <clears throat> and then and then for lunch in my desk, I just I've, I've tried about every different flavor of pork rinds. Because pork rinds are uh, low carb and, and in fact, if you find the right ones, they're zero carb, zero sugar, but some of them are like less than one gram of carb per serving. And so there's lots of good flavors of pork rinds out there. So those they're really, and then, and then, yeah, then you can eat, you know, jerky, although I have noticed some are more, some have sugar. Yeah. Some of them you got to watch out. So like the main one, the main jerky that I normally have in there, I haven't been eating because it's got like, yeah, like four grams of sugar. And I learned that from JT when he kind of got on his like health kick was, was a lot of jerky has sugar used as a preservative Mm -hmm. instead of salt. Yeah. But I've also like, that's opened my eyes to like a whole new level of jerky. The stuff without sugar is way better in my opinion. Yeah. Well, uh, and then other than that, you know, I've been snacking on some summer sausage and pepperoni and it just, it just doesn't make sense to me that you can lose weight on this diet. And now it makes sense because I'm not losing weight on this diet because it, it's just what you think. I'm just sitting there eating like all this fatty stuff and I'm, you know. In theory, I guess, scientifically, you're supposed to lose weight, but that hasn't been uh, my experience as of yet. I'm going to give it, I'll give it maybe another week or so, because if I don't really start seeing, losing weight, it's not going to be worth it. And I think by next Tuesday, we're going to be back to beer because, I mean, I've given it a, a full go. It's been, by then, it will have been like almost a month. And I think that's as much as I, I'm gonna, willing to to give it. Plus we got Thanksgiving coming up. I'm well, not yeah, gonna I'm yeah. definitely not gonna be doing it through Thanksgiving. You can't you, that that has to be a cheat day and and no, yeah, uh-huh. not gonna happen. So well this uh this Michelob Ultra Organic Seltzer, not terrible, but not terribly great either. Um maybe I'm just sour because I really want a beer. I haven't had a beer in way too long uh, at this point. But uh yeah, it's it's not as bad as I thought. I think maybe I'll give it like a three. All right. It's not terrible. It's not great. Right there, smack dab in the middle, I would say. Okay. So this is the cucumber lime, by the way. And, and you're having the grapefruit. Yeah, right? the grapefruit melon. And and you you handed it to me knowing I love I love grapefruit. I'm I'm gonna be fully honest with you. I've I've tried just about every seltzer there is, truly white claw. White claw is usually my go-to, particularly the grapefruit flavor. If I'm ever in a situation where I see a 24 ounce white claw grapefruit or this grapefruit melon i'm gonna grab this 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 may potentially become my new go-to seltzer why 24 ounces that's just saying that you can drink more of it yeah yeah i mean i mean that's that's usually how i see it because i'm not gonna buy i mean that's the other thing is like i can't sit there and drink like a whole 12 pack of seltzer like so it's good for one these come in 24s i've never seen that i don't know but i'm gonna have to find out next time I mean, it wouldn't. It makes sense. I mean, you know, they got the pounders and deuce deuces. Like, why I, not? I also like a lot of what they've done here with the label because we. I feel like we got to talk about it. You got the even Mick, even Mick ultra flag. That is the wackest label ever, and you're still in love with but it. But it's it, in the the tab. Cool tab right, I'll, I'll give them credit for the tab. That's cool. I don't know. That think, label, you're impressed. I think by that, that they label? were able to stay on theme. Do I think it's a great theme? No, but the fact that they found a way to incorporate it and make it work for this particular beverage, I I, I will give them props for that. So I'm going to go ahead and, I mean, it's still a seltzer, so at the end of the day, it's not going to get the highest marks. I will give it a 3.75. All right. Well, there you go. We'll see uh, see where they go from here because I know they have a couple different flavors, one of which uh, really piqued my interest. So we'll give those a whirl. It's Bruce Day Tuesday on 105.3 The Bear. Stick around. <laughs> 